Well, for a bit more on that, uh, let's uh, speak to uh, um, our correspondent there, Rabalang Khadebe, and let's find out how many times he summited Tababusiu. <laughs> yeah, that, that's quite ambitious. I, I have tried, I think, about three times, but uh, anyway, let's leave it at that. <laughs> one gets a sense, one gets a sense that um, this really goes to the heart of uh, what it is to be Basutu. Indeed, you, if you have not summited that mountain, really, we still question your identity um, as, as a Mosotu. Mm. It's quite tricky and weird because your first 100 meters of climbing that mountain feels like an impossible duty. But for some reason, once you reach, I mean, just a few meters up of the, it, it, be, it begins to become slightly mm. normal and doable and actually encourages you to go even further. I, I think that is why the trick in the name that it is Taba with you, the mountain at night, uh, actually emanates from. I mean, it is, it's got quite a long history. I believe it was the capital of Lesotho at one stage, uh, a stronghold for King Mshwesho. So the history is certainly there and, and has just remained an, uh, an integral part of uh, Lesotho's history. A, a fortress indeed, a birthplace, I think, for the nation of Basotho because when it was right, right in the middle of the wars, uh, King Mushoshe said, find me a place where we can uh, at least stay away from much trouble, and where we can see the enemy, where we can at least hide. Now, the trick to it was that it looked like a summitable, simple mountain with several entrances. Now, what they would do is that they would shut all the possible entrances at night and only leave one. So somebody, perhaps who is a spy, would go around having identified during the day the, the entrances, that would be easy, only to find that at night they block them with stones. So they keep going round and around this mountain. That is why they said it looks like this mountain gets taller at mm -hmm. night, but during the day it looks like a simple, easy and summitable mountain. With things like this, and it's right across the continent, there's always a degree of um, auspiciousness, and sometimes even uh, people believe that there's supernatural properties associated with this. Do the Basutu look at this mountain and look at it with uh, some spiritual and supernatural powers? I, I want to believe to some extent, people have a strong belief that this is where they can go and reconnect with the Aikin Mushesho, who is buried right on top of, of the mountain, and some of the iconic members uh, that emanate from the, from the Basutu era. But mostly, I think this is where you find a, a, a pilgrimage, kind of. You find a lot of Basutu who have come back home during this time. They, they go there to regain, to reach, energize, to get their strength by summiting the mountain, Others purely as a hiking exercise, but others wanting to reconnect again with the history. But I think a lot of them, they say it is a prayer. You will find that on the 1st of January when, when we start our um, calendar year, uh, even the royal family summits the mountain on the 1st just to go, I think for a refreshing also to reconnect. So I think there's quite a lot of religious uh, and spiritual connection when it comes to the mountain. So tell us about this World Heritage Site um, significance. I know that in 1967, the government uh, declared it a national monument. Um, so it's been under local protection for a long time. And over the years, the United Nations also uh, gave it some recognition. What will the World Heritage Site designation mean? Indeed, it, quite, quite a debate because I think I got quite a lot of insights when I spoke to a representative from the UNESCO telling me about really the rigorous process that one has to go through a whole mountains of submissions of documents, researches, and consultations that you need to go through talking to the stakeholders. And he said, the, 
while it gains a higher status by being recognized not only as a national monument, but it goes to the books of the world as an icon, as um, the World Heritage Site, then those who want to pursue further thesis uh, on understanding culture can now begin to identify with the mountain to understand a better history of it, the formation of the Basutu nation, and whatever surrounds that proximity, the choice of the mountain. So I think it gains some interest from foreign nationals who would mm. want to now come and identify and see the mountain. But mostly I think the aspect of tourism, a lot of people who decide on which areas to visit they want to know the iconic status of that particular place some will say i have gone to the highest pub uh in africa or in mm -hmm. the world which is found uh in the mohotong area uh, others will say they would want to see where the water so i think putting it to the as a world heritage site now raises its status for people to have a special interest not only to say mm -hmm. okay this is the best place of basutu but to say i have been to one of those iconic sites which is a world heritage right. site how do the local community interact with this mountain uh, i believe king mushweshwe and king mushweshwe the second are buried up there Indeed, and quite a few other iconic leaders uh, of, of Basotho. It is only recently that it was now declared as a national monument. They started curtailing as to who will then be buried on, on the, at the top of Tababasi, because now there has been a suggestion, not even a suggestion, there has been a decision that what they call the Hero's Acre now be, 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 be made available as a site at the foothills of Tababasu, such that the decision for who goes to Tababasu remains one of those ultimate decisions that is done at the highest level of authority. If you remember the recent musician, Saposula, who was now buried also at the iconic site, which is the Hero's Acre, I think they try to now say, once we declare this a national monument, maybe even escalate it to mm -hmm. a World Heritage Site, the number of people who can now have access to that particular place should be excluded. The second part would be now to actually protect the area and everything, maybe the vegetation, the plants that are available on top of the mountain, such that it becomes no secure. It 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 protects its identity as original as possible. Somebody was even telling me that even the trees that are planted them, there, most of them are foreign. Uh, so he said, you will have to now try and make sure that it retains its original and unique identity by, by, re, by living it as original as it is. Do tourists come knowing that it's there and that they will visit, or has it become a surprise for many that visit Lesotho and they're told there's also this amazing uh, uh, site? I, I think uh, the tourists, with a little bit of research that yeah. they come, that go through before they visit a particular place, a lot of them begin to understand that such a small nation, formation of Basutu, their history, a short history, and the great trek where they moved from Butabuta in 1824 to that particular place, which is Tababusil. People want to know what is so unique about this place. But of late, there is now a cultural center which is built around Tababusil area, such that those who actually wish to sleep over at the foothills of Tababusiu are able to access such a place. Uh, there is now an annual festival that happens during December, such that that particular area, I think the intention is that it can become a recreational area. It can become a place where one who wants to understand further about Basotho, things are within a reachable distance. So I think for tourists, whom I have seen, the first place they want to understand is to go and understand where Tababusi is, such that they can at least say, I have actually connected with the nation of Basut. All right, has Prince Harry been up there? 
Um, <laughs> that one is a little tricky. He has been all over the place. I've seen him at places, actually mending fences in other places. So I don't think it's a far-fetched idea. Actually, I will ask Prince to say so. <laughs> He's probably the best to know how far he has gone. <laughs> Fantastic. Rafelang, thank you very, very much indeed. I'll see you up the mountain. <laughs> Peter, happy new year. And Good luck with you. the mountain. I'll take, the, I'll take my drone to see how far <laughs> Bless it. Thanks, my brother. It's been great. That's our correspondent in Lesotho, Ravelang Khadebe, talking to us about Tababusiu, which is an iconic mountain in the country. They're trying to get World Heritage Site status for it. If you're ever in Maseru, it's about 24 kilometers east of uh, the capital, so it's not very far, but uh, well worth a visit and try and get up. It'd be an experience for you.